I'm Leo Ward of the Kit Guru. This is Leo Says. A week and a day after the end of Computex 2018. Now, myself and Brian he did a kind of wrap up of Computex on the Friday, actually, so the final day of Computex. And everything we said there pretty much stands. So if you haven't watched that video, feel free to go take a look. There's no point in repeating uh, all of that. However, I've had time to kind of consider a few things since. So this is a combination Leo says for the week after Computex along with a kind of further thoughts about Computex uh, and the opening thought is Kit Guru was hellish busy at Computex. The two faces you saw on camera for the various videos we did were myself and Bryony uh, but we were but two people out of a total of seven. There were three of us in uh, Computex uh, in Taipei, uh, our third partner in crime being Anja who's a sort of commercial guy but he's also doing various other bits. He did a few videos actually um, and then we had four people back at base uh, doing news and such like. Uh, the different thing about Computex 2018 was that KitGuru put an emphasis on video. Uh, I haven't actually counted these items individually, but I am told we had 16 videos and 56 items of news. Certain companies got an, a number of hits, uh, MSI and Azus ROG in particular. They did an awful lot of stuff at Computex and they got hit after hit. Uh, other companies got sort of a, a video here or a news piece there, uh, but it all added up as a lot of stuff in a week. And we were, as I say, busy. Uh, so apart from congratulations to the Kit Guru team, uh, it's quite remarkable uh, to my mind actually how much goes on. Uh, and then obviously there's the final content that you people see. But as I say, the emphasis was on video, uh, which was a change for me because ordinarily I'm going around meeting people, taking photos, writing words, sending them back to base. Uh, base has a look at them, decides what they think of them uh, and then does their own take on things. And we end up with a finished news item. Obviously the video, it's kind of lands in their lap and it's what myself and Brian you see, uh, which we took sort of advantage of that. Actually, we did um, one video, which was Vamillo and Ducky channel, which was entirely Brian's idea because she loves keyboards. And that video has been very successful. So it goes to show if you see something shiny and interesting on the show floor, go for it. Uh, and we will certainly do more of that at uh, CES 2019 Las Vegas. And it's a fairly horrifying thought thinking ahead to next year, but that's where we're at. So what did I think of Computex overall? It was interesting as ever. Uh, it was also slightly frustrating. So the companies that did well, Fantex, Lian Lee, uh, EKWB, Alpha Cool, Azus, Rog and MSI, they did all good stuff. Uh, we also saw interesting products uh, that were eye-catching from Inwin, Vermillo and Ducky Channel. Inwin always does this at their shows. They have literally showcases that you go, wow, look at that. In this case, it's like an aluminium uh, well, sculpture almost. Uh, totally. I mean, the idea it's a PC case is crazy. Last year, it's the sort of uh, the robot globe thing. Uh, and before that, they had the motorized robot case that panels open. They all cost fortunes. They're utterly impractical, but they catch the attention. Uh, Vermillo and Ducky Channel, as I say, keyboards. Uh, interesting. I mean, interesting to see. Uh, I, I hate to, <laughs> I have to admit rather, uh, I am warming towards the idea of an exotic keyboard. So there we go. Even the coldest of us can be converted. Other companies, uh, ASRock put on a decent show. It really struck me actually that ASRock, because of the Tai Chi image, the uh, silver, um, silver sort of steely aluminium -y color, uh, all their motherboards look the same. You stand back, it's a wall of motherboards and you cannot tell one from another. Nonetheless, they had their new graphics cards, which aren't the most exciting uh, graphics cards, but they had them and uh, they are clearly uh, making steady progress. Gigabyte uh, just appeared to be confused. They had decent products on show, products that we've reviewed, particularly the Aero 15X uh, laptop plus some other bits and pieces. The confusion was, for example, uh, while we were doing the tour, we were shown uh, close to the end, the uh, anniversary edition processor was there, the Core i7 uh, 8086K, which is the one that turbos to five gigahertz just about. And that was in one of their systems. We were literally about to leave and someone said, oh, he didn't clock what the processor was. Come and take a look. I was like, okay, go back. I mean, how would we know what the processor was in a particular system? And there it was. So this was the system that had their RGB RAM and their SSD as well, both of which looked like interesting products. Uh, and also the uh, anniversary edition processor. So you go, righty-ho. Thank you very much. You get a screenshot and there we go. I mean, end of the day, that processor to me is not the most exciting, but it was something Intel announced. They actually launched it at Computex. So fair play. But there wasn't even like a product card saying, you know, five gigahertz process. Very strange. And there was another example of gigabyte confusion, which I, I just didn't get. Where um, When I was doing a tour of the, uh, well, it's not a booth because they have a floor of the 101 tower. Uh, we saw a fish tank and it, 
it appeared to be two fluids. I mean, the, the room was very dim and I kind of walked past it quite quickly. But basically, it's a graphics card in the lower half and the top half had fish. And I thought, of my first glance and I looked at it was fish, top, water, bottom, what's that? And I said, is that an example of cooling? I was told, no, it's not. So I thought, okay. So I, I did a teased a little bit in the video, somewhat foolishly with hindsight, because it turns out that system was indeed uh, an example of Novec cooling. The interesting thing is that around the back of the tank, as I've seen in other photos subsequently, I missed it myself even though I stood in front of the blooming thing, they're actually using three CPU coolers to uh, uh, act as heat exchangers. So rather than running the Novec through uh, a radiator, uh, they were using the heat ex uh, the CPU coolers as heat ex regular towers, 120mm towers, uh, which is quite a neat idea. But my, my point is not that, because in and of itself, I, I have no interest in using Novec and I don't think anyone's going to sell a system with it. It's that Gigabyte told me it wasn't an example of a running PC, and it was, and I find that really strange. And it just says to me that for whatever reason, Gigabyte was just having a bit of a tough Computex. I don't understand why, but I'm prepared to say that a large part of the blame uh, lies on the shoulders of Intel, because Intel to most people were the villains of Computex 2018. Uh, although Nvidia kind of was because they didn't launch any new graphics, but then they never said they would. Uh, so uh, we can kind of give Nvidia a kind of, uh, boo ya kind of award whereas intel they they were going further than that they were going for a lot of fud uh and somebody i, I don't know where i read this but i love it it they came up with a headline somewhere of the korean war with a c c-o-r-e-a-n war it's not mine but i like it and i'm nicking that uh so the korean war with intel because there was stuff that Intel announced, and there was stuff that Intel fudged about, and there's stuff that Intel didn't do. And Intel's so important to our industry that what Intel does or does not do matters to everybody. And the consequence, because specifically the Z390 chipset, uh, which Intel kind of leaked before Computex, they put out one of those product pages, clearly in error. They have not launched Z390. I've subsequently, since I've been back, asked Intel, have you launched Intel Z390 or not, to which answer came back, no. So, no, they have not. We know it's coming. Um, we think we know what it's about, but no. And because there wasn't Z390, therefore you don't get Z390 motherboards, and therefore you have, you know, acres of space where you might otherwise have motherboards. I, I don't actually know for a fact that a Zeus, MSI, ASRock, and uh, Gigabyte have Z390 motherboards uh, in development. I'm assuming they do. I bloom and hope they do. Uh, but as things stand, I would have hoped to see loads of Z390 products. I did not. And even the lesser boards going down the stack, um, the, the 450s and such like, there were only one or two of those around. But anyway, getting back to Intel. So the Z390 thing appears to be that it's not just a step up from Z370. It appears to be that it's going to support a rumoured eight core coffee lake, which is where the Korean Wars uh, jape comes from, which would appear to be LJ1151 still. Uh, apparently this is June, September, but I mean, who knows? And that is sort of putting the lie really to Intel having previously said about AMD who the heck needs more than four cores you know Coffee Lake six cores clearly going well uh, and now the developers have got on board with this because until Intel moved from four cores and up on the uh, desktop forget the high-end desktop they've had more than that for ages but until Intel started to move really where was the benefit to the developers in coming up with products that work well you know software games that work well with six eight 12, 16 cores. Now Intel's been moving. Well, here we go. And now that we are rumoured to be getting eight core uh, Coffee Lake, uh, I guess it'll be called Coffee Lake, but whether it's uh, eighth gen or ninth, gen, you know, who knows. Uh, but the thing is that assuming Intel basically just doubles up in the original Coffee Lake, that uh, and assuming it's eight cores on die and they don't, in inverted commas, glue two dies together, because Intel obviously was ripping into AMD about Infinity Fabrics, so they wouldn't do that, would they? That this would suggest it requires 10 nanometer. Uh, I just can't see there's enough space in the package at the moment with 14 nanometer to put in an extra two cores, and also... Uh, six core coffee lake requires so much extra juice over the four core uh, and as a result thermals that if they don't go to 10 nanometer to do this then you know I, I just don't really see it the thing is that intel has had terrible trouble with 10 nanometer it's been at least a year and probably two years since they failed to deliver 10 nanometer and failed in the most horrendous way 
uh, apparently they can do 10 nanometer but apparently the yields are just outrageously poor if the yields are outrageously poor costs go up if costs go up they've got a problem uh, this of course is something that AMD does not have to contend with because thanks to the use of infinity fabric they can bin endless uh, four and three core dies uh, and nail together CPUs as a result and jobs are good and, which was precisely why they went down the route they did. Uh, Intel with this monolithic approach and then moving to new fabrication process seems to have huge problems. If Intel can do something with 10 nanometer and they can release the eight core desktop part then that means that we are expecting hoping to see eight core Coffee Lake and Z390 in September. But the thing is, balanced against that, Intel recently did a financial call where they were talking about 10 nanometer being announced for 2019. Now, this is something that they announced a year and two years ago. I mean, the idea it's announced for 2019 is just uh, daft. And furthermore, uh, pundits, let's call them pundits, think this means second half of 2019. So there's a gulf in what I'm seeing here, which is on the one hand, I'm expecting to see Z390 and 8-core Coffee Lake, which I assume means on 10 nanometer very soon. On the other hand, 10 nanometer products would appear to be a lifetime away, relatively speaking, for Intel. And I cannot reconcile those two thoughts whatsoever. Uh, it also strongly suggests that AMD will be on 7 nanometer before Intel has properly moved uh, away from 14 nanometer, which is just... Wow. Um, AMD has got this great big, I mean, it's, it's the World Cup has started, so therefore a footballing analogy. AMD has this huge cavernous open goal. Intel's there, the goalie's got his gloves nailed to the pitch. Uh, all AMD has to do is just trickle it in the net and they win. And yet, and I hate to say this, I'm waiting for AMD to somehow snatch defeat from the jaws of victory because we've seen it so many times before. Please don't do that to me, Andy. Please deliver. Get the competition rolling. Do this good thing, please. And the upshot of this. So we hear that uh, Azus has got four models of ROG Maximus 11 coming with Z390. They'll be called apparently Code Extreme Formula and Heroes. So no surprises there. Uh, as to the when, hoping that's going to be September as well, but don't know that part. But the fact that names and boxes and such like are already a... Uh, uh, in the rumour mill suggests imminent so perhaps not 10 nanometer or perhaps some 10 nanometer enough to do don't know really cannot reconcile that but overall intel 2018 what a lousy year for them spectrum meltdown 10 nanometer and fud um which if you don't know is fear uncertainty doubt and what did Intel actually do at Computex? So we had the Core i7-8086K Anniversary Edition. That's this one that uh, 5 gigahertz, as I said. But that means it's maximum turbo. It's 5 gigahertz. And Intel is not sending out samples for review. However, a few uh, websites have already bought uh, examples. And initial reports are, well, that's rubbish. Um, one site left there's running overnight and got in the figures are lousy. The thing had got nowhere near 5 gigahertz, even on one core. Uh, but... You can manually overclock it to five gigahertz. Basically, it's a binned coffee lake. It's exactly what you'd expect it to be. Do it manually, five, 5.1, no trouble. Leave it to its own devices. Who knows? Uh, a really weird product. And then, of course, we had the 28 core, which I said, and this goes back to my gigabyte thing, I said um, during Computex that uh, there were various reports. It was uh, the processor, which is obviously an overclocked Xeon. I mean, it's it's one of those, the winner of the silicon lottery processors. Uh, so it's uh, LJ3647, six core, uh, six channel memory and all the rest of it, uh, and a prototype motherboard. And I said, as far as I was aware, it was not a gigabyte board. And the reason I said that was when I've been up to the gigabyte uh, floor on the 101, there'd been no sight of this magical motherboard a few other people reported on subsequently. Uh, but apparently it was there for an hour. Uh, and many gigabyte people had no knowledge of this because it was a super duper Intel secret. So it showed up for an hour. I'm guessing the people that reported were told separately. Uh, they turned up, got a bit of news coverage. Good luck to them. And then the board went and that was that. I was told it was another brand. Now, there aren't that many makes of motherboards. I'm not going to go any further than that. Uh, so whether other companies are also developing boards or not, I have no idea. But that board that was used for that demo is indeed 
uh, gigabyte and yes the water chiller and yes like was it minus 10 c someone was saying anyway very chilled sub ambient sub ambient for sure uh power supply required 1200 watts to power the chiller apparently the processor itself requires about a thousand watts people are estimating some are saying more than that even 1200 uh the salient point being is that Cinebench, which was the test that was run on that system, ran about two seconds flat because it's so powerful. Uh, so if it can run Prime 95 extensively with AVX workload, well, it can't, can it? Uh, so the whole thing was ridiculous, just ridiculous. And the only thing you can say about it is that Intel is clearly desperate to not just give the floor to AMD. Uh, it's quite remarkable. We had the 18 core a year ago with the um, low core count, high core count, extreme core count, high core count uh, Xeon Silicon, which has become a proper product. Now we have the 28 core extreme core count and it's not a proper product. If it becomes a proper product, well, okie dokie, God knows what price it'll be. Who cares to a certain extent? Uh, but it just looks like Intel is desperate. And every aspect of that briefing and demo was just horrible. The funny thing is that at least one tech site was rebuking IT journos for reporting on the 28 core demo. And I cannot see that. I just can't see it. If Intel says, here's a keynote, here's this thing running, what do you think? And you've got no time to... um really make a judgment on it yeah you do get a chance afterwards and you have conversations but at the time it is what it is and as long as you put the words intel demonstrated or intel and intel claims fair enough i say uh very strange that someone should get so uh shouty uh that uh, people are just reporting what is actually going on don't understand that but we'll come back to that in a bit because there's been a bit of that going on recently uh nvidia so nvidia no presence worthy of the name at computex uh, obviously they've become just massively important to us all in terms of gaming graphics and uh, one of the questions is gtx 1180 or gtx 2080 or whatever the graphics chip is going to be called uh, at the moment it feels as though people think it'll be gtx 2080 but who knows nvidia has this habit of doing their own thing and they keep things very close to their chest it appears it's going to be a uh, Turing technology and it appears it's going to be in September. September looked quite firm um, a while ago as to whether that's you know September on sale so whether that means announced beforehand launch reviews and all the rest of it and then we build up for the big woohoo uh, but anyway NVIDIA does apparently have new gaming graphics coming uh, you know this side of Christmas uh, so finally finally but it's been a terribly long time coming and they're going to do things quite clearly in their own suite time since computex we have had an announcement via twitter naturally that intel will be uh, launching a discrete graphics card in 2020 uh, as to what kind of graphics card that will be or not a clue don't know the first thing about it um i suppose as raj is on board there it's kind of no surprise but in another sense to what end is this graphics card going to be be interesting to see what that consists of but right now we have no information and that's all there is to it are the bits and pieces um, before Computex, Intel had a thing going on in America, more on the server side of things, where they discussed, among other things, Optane. Uh, Optane memory is the thing I don't care about, which looks like an SSD, and it's for caching hard drives. You have a hard drive, you boot off it, you use the Optane to cache it, and it, it works intelligently. It looks like one drive, even though there are two physical units, and it makes it go quicker. That's great. Um, that, that's all to the good, except I haven't booted off hard drive and I don't know how long and kit guru readers enthusiast and I trust they boot off SSD as well so that doesn't interest me but Intel Optane DIMMs kind of does uh, Optane DIMMs look like memory modules seemingly if your board has got uh, six uh, memory slots four could be for regular DDR or four at the moment and then one or two could be for Optane DIMMs and the Optane DIMMs sit in the hierarchy between your RAM and your SSD just to give the whole system a bit of a boost and encouragement and the capacities discussed were 128 gigabyte and 512 gigabyte uh, it's a joint project between Intel and Micron and Micron's thing is supposed to be called I, I think it's Quantex it's it can't be quants so Quantex uh, but Micron doesn't seem to do anything with it uh, so that would seem to be an Intel thing as to whether it makes the slightest difference to the desktop not a clue. The fact that something appears to be happening with it, good, because this technology has been sort of 
milling around for some considerable time. Uh, similarly, before Computex, we had uh, reports from Intel Micron about uh, 96 layer TLC NAND, which is a good thing. The more layers, the better, the bigger the density, the higher the capacity, move it on, move it on. Give me those four terabyte SSDs, those eight terabyte SSDs, please. And I'll be a happy man. Also, 64 layer QLC, that's a quad, Q for quad, which is four bits uh, and that was something that uh, was thought to be effectively impossible because the um, endurance was going to be just terrible. Uh, but it seems not. It seems that whereas originally, I mean, when I say terrible, as in like 10 writes and, and you it's dead. The number of bits is uh, how many voltage levels you need in any particular cell. So you can see what's going on with... Um, uh, with uh, four bits, it, it, the, the steps between each uh, level are finer and finer and you start to confuse your threes and your fours and your fives. So uh, it matters and endurance was uh, originally speculated to be around about 10 writes before a cell was dead. It's now thought to be a thousand writes, uh, which would be uh, potentially very interesting. So QLC uh, NAND has now appeared in an enterprise SATA drive called the five, uh, 5210 ION or 5210 ION. The fact it has appeared in enterprise uh, SATA drive, that's interesting to see. I don't know whether it's going to have a knock on to the lower levels of the market, i.e. us, but the fact it exists is encouraging. Uh, I honestly thought QLC would appear in uh, SD cards for cameras and such like, and that was it. And the final topic of this, Leo says, pay to play. There's been a furore in the past week about uh, reviewers, our, our websites and YouTube channels. Are they paid to show up to do news about things? And six, I think it was six. Uh, tech sites channels were named by a bloke on Twitter and at least three of them have gone hell no let's take it for granted that all those channels are saying hell no um and they're also offended and i understand that entirely one of the named channels who i don't think has responded to this thing but then he's been away at computex and doing uh, more coverage since is uh, gamers nexus uh i would say of all the tech sites and channels on the planet uh, the one that's least likely to be taking money under the table without stating that they've taken that money is Gamers Nexus. So for me, this story's rubbish. Uh, and, and that's the end of it. So if you want to stop right here and say it's rubbish, move on, uh, feel free. Uh, furthermore, the people that denied it, again, I take it entirely at face value. Those people that have said they do not do pay for play, I'm absolutely fine with that. Totally believe me. But balanced against that, what's not to like about pay for play think about this i'm sat here doing this as a job of work kick guru is a website it's not a youtube channel this is obviously on kick guru's youtube channel our youtube channel relatively speaking is a minnow it's tiny it's come on quite well in the past few years but it is tiny compared to the big boys it is just minuscule income from youtube for kick guru is zilch costs are something so uh we are paying for you to watch this okay that's just a fact uh but having said that it's quite clear that video is the future which is why we put the emphasis on video at computex uh, we can't ignore it we can say we don't like youtube all we like and we'll be the losers so therefore you aren't paying anything to watch this and our other videos and that's just how it is. And we have to deal with that. And we have to make it work for us. And the way we, the way that Kit Guru makes it work is by having advertisers on the web page. Uh, and we hope not too many of you use ad block and that our advertisers are happy and that it's all jubbly. OK, that, that's the deal. There are many other people who do not have a website and do not have advertisers. They rely pretty much entirely on YouTube and then they have other sources of revenue such as merchandise and such like. Or they sell in, in a very few instances, they sell products as well. Uh, uh, but generally speaking, and you might have Patreon, generally speaking, your income comes from YouTube. You might have an Amazon affiliate, whatever. Uh, but in Kit Guru's case, uh, the income is through the website, which is why I say at the end of a video, head to Kit Guru read the review look at the photos because there is more content there i mean let's face it youtube's not a place to do photos and such like and words and that's how we do it now this thing about payment there are many ways it can work many many ways so for example an advertiser on kit guru can say we've got a laptop that's launching do you want to review it 
and the natural response is sure thing we're partners we'll do this thing and if the laptop arrives and it's good we give it a good review and if it's a stinker we give it a bad review and that's dead straightforward uh, there are problems with this that and this has been the case for media since the dawn of time uh, we can receive a laptop that simply is not appropriate to kick guru's audience and we say are you absolutely sure and the word comes back yes that's the one we're promoting we go okay well <laughs> Even if it works brilliantly, we don't care, but we'll do it. That happens. Um, you don't have to have uh, a massive amount of attention to detail to go through Kitgur and see that. You will spot this happens because they want to launch a product and we review. But we review honestly. That's the key thing. We don't boost our reviews because they're a friend. Um, Balanced against that, I suppose we don't give stinking reviews because they're an enemy because that wouldn't make any sense. But you take my point. Uh, because <laughs> it's our credibility. If we sell a review to somebody, if we sell a verdict to somebody, we're sunk, absolutely sunk. Now, let's take this a few steps further, because this pay for play thing uh, at Computex, if somebody had said to me, uh, for example, uh, here's 100 bucks to step over to the Ducky Channel uh, booth and have a look at the keyboards, come along. The situation didn't arise. It never has arisen, the best of our knowledge. Uh, but whatever i mean they were opposite g skill i was seeing g skill they were one down from win in win i went to see in win where's the harm it didn't happen but where's the harm now some people will be appalled by that thought i know this because they've said as much but in the great scheme of things what of it if on the other hand i sent a keyboard i reviewed the keyboard and said it's the best keyboard ever and it wasn't well that's just in well, it's corrupt, it's immoral, it's wrong, it's short-sighted, it's foolish, and I would hate myself. That's many reasons not to do it. Uh, and you have to think over the years, media's done similar things. I mean, I'm quite sure it has. But what about other things? What about uh, other aspects of the media? Uh, Bezos now owns the Washington Post. Is the Washington Post running negative stories about Amazon? Which obviously, you know, Bezos, Amazon are one and the same thing. I very much doubt it. Is that corrupt? Well, it's not great, but uh, it's understandable. Uh, over here, we've got Murdoch, Sky TV, uh, various newspapers, Fox uh, Studios. You see in the newspapers, they're running some promotion about some... And you think, well, we know that a proprietor owns the newspaper, or his family does, and they own that studio. And it's they're helping each other. I mean, it's not right, but you can see what's going on. And I'm sure there are plenty of people who don't understand what's going on and they're, they're just suckered uh, and they think, oh, what a good movie. Uh, Oprah Winfrey has just been paid or signed up rather uh, to provide one billion dollars, billion with a B. Uh, so that's nine zeros of programming for Apple. Do you think any of that programming is going to include Apple products? Wouldn't be a surprise, would it? I mean, iPhones are ubiquitous, iPads and such like uh, balanced against that do you think any of the programming is going to say rude things about apple well who knows we'll have to wait and see it wouldn't be a shock to me if it didn't but would i be eyes open looking for oprah winfrey's people to say bad things about apple ah not in the slightest it wouldn't occur to me to and so on and so on and so on so the whole pay for play thing it is there are many 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 ways you can look at this and funnily enough i i actually um i was taken aback actually by an accusation, I suppose. Um, I'm doing this mega build with a Corsair 1000D case. Um, and it's a 10 grand PC, two systems, loads of parts and such like. I got the first part of the video up before I went to Computex. I've got to get back on and finish it up and then do some stuff and then pull it apart. And somebody in the comments, they were a little bit shouty and they referred to why don't you sort of essentially admit what you're doing for your sponsor? And I must confess, it hadn't occurred to me that Corsair was a sponsor for that bill. But in a sense, they are. In a sense, this person's quite correct. And the reason I didn't say it was because A, I didn't see it that way. And B, at a certain level, don't take this the wrong way, what's it got to do with you? Um, I, I made any number of decisions uh, in that build so far. Um, some right, some wrong. For example, I started off with two GTX 1080 Ti's and I was intending to use a Vega 64 on the second system. And I switched the Vega for a GTX 1080. And the reason was because the Vega is a dual uh, two and a half slot card. And the water block uh, that I could have put on it, uh, well, I wanted to put on it, actually didn't fit that particular Vega. So I couldn't water cool it and I couldn't put the air cooled card in that position vertically mounted because it, it wouldn't work. Uh, 
But I didn't explain that. Uh, as I recall, what I said was something like, uh, I'm going all GTX 1080 just because, which isn't really very satisfactory. But there was actually some more considered thought than that. But what I didn't explain was the bigger premise behind that whole thing, because the thousand is a massive case. It's four hundred ninety nine dollars. It either four four nine pounds or four nine nine pounds. I'm not sure which. And Corsair said before they sent out the case for review, look, it's crazy doing a regular review on this case because it's an empty box, comes in no fans, it's a load of money. We've got to do something big, big. They said this to a number of reviewers. I'm quite sure that this is not just a kit guru. Uh, they said, but what we'll do to make it better, apart from that we want mega build, is we'll send you all the parts you want. Uh, so, okay. And that's why it's Corsair memory, um, actually not Corsair SSDs, it's with WD, but uh, there's all manner of fans and lights and such, like stacks and stacks of Corsair kit. It's because it's a different type of review, but it is at its heart meant to be a review. It will be in the end. Uh, but it is certainly unusual. And then we thought, let's just push the boat out and go for this crazy length video to see what the punters think of it. Uh, but the person that said, your sponsor, and I thought, well, you're an idiot, was actually, in a sense, quite correct. And I, I just hadn't explained the uh, the premise behind this unusual take on things because it's, here's a case I've built into it. What do I think of it? It's more than that. It's different. And he's quite correct. Uh, in this instance, Corsair is a sponsor, but they're also an advertiser and they sent me stuff and I've used their components in other builds before. If I'm using a Corsair case, it will typically have a Corsair power supply. It will typically have a Corsair liquid cooler. That's quite normal. Uh, and it may well have Corsair memory. Entirely conventional. And therefore I didn't think to explain this. No one's paying me money under the table. Absolutely not. No one's paying Kit Guru money under the table. Uh, and more to the point, no one's buying our verdict. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. I'm Leo Waldock. This is Leo Says. Mm -hmm.